Do you know what these seeds are for, Anna? Yeah. These are called herbs. Does anyone know what an herb is? An investigation consists of selecting a topic and investigating it or really learning as much as we can about the topic over a long period of time. We had a giant post-it with different ideas for topics of investigation and we asked parents to select one and we also left a blank space for them to write their own. We actually included the parents in choosing the nature investigation topic and then each classroom chose where they wanted to take a nature approach. Nature just lends itself during the summer. They just thought it would be perfect for the teachers to go in different directions and with nature it was just endless. We thought it was a really good time of year for it. We knew that we could do a lot of planting and whatnot with the kids and it's just all around them this time of year. James, would you like to water the flowers and the sure. vegetables? Sure. We decided that we were going to start with gardening. They didn't have the background knowledge of what a raised bed garden was, so we visited the gardens. Each child was able to plant a vegetable and a flower. Tomatoes! Look! The tomatoes are already big. The tomatoes are coming out. The children would go out approximately twice a week, and we would weed the garden. Any part of the gardening, they did. All right, let's get these weeds. We can make a pile. We thought about all the different things that we wanted to put in the garden, and we had seed packets. We showed them the pictures. All right, let's look at another one. What's this? Oh, flower seeds! Flower seeds! We compared the seeds. We did a lot of comparing, and so we, we shook that. Why do you think this one sounds different than that one? Do you think the seeds will look the same? Do you think they'll look different? That's a big white seed, isn't it? We're just looking now. Big white seed. Now, what's in this hand? Um, little seeds. Little tiny seeds. I wonder if that's why they sounded different. They were able to see that the seeds were all very different, and we took them outside and we planted them in our garden. There were so many opportunities uh, for science experiences during our nature investigation, predicting, observing, identifying. We had a big discussion. If you find an insect that's not alive, we can bring it back to our classroom and observe it. They really enjoyed that because they got to see hands-on a, a dead insect and to manipulate it and look closely at its body parts. The children learned to gain sensitivity and respect for the insects and that when they see an insect that their first instinct shouldn't be to step on it. See how he's got a little teeny piece of sand? Yeah, that's he's coming just like out. a snowball. It kind of does look like a snowball. Now look what happens. What's going to happen when it gets all the way to the top? I did quite a bit of research on different experiments that I could do that would be developmentally appropriate for that age. We went on a water hunt and they found there's water in the fish tank, there's water in the sink, there's water in the bathroom. And then my next question was, well, what do we use water for? We said, what do we use water for? We said swimming, growing plants, drinking, washing, and playing. And so I posed the question, well, can we wash without water? Can, could we clean our hands without the water? So we did an experiment in which they got really dirty. They stuck their hands in the soil. Then I handed them each a paper towel, and I said, OK, clean your hands. Mine isn't clean. Wait a minute, what'd you say? Mine isn't clean. It isn't clean? Show your friends. Mm -hmm. Do Anna's hands look clean? And then they had the opportunity to clean with the water. They realized that we really did need the water for washing. Did the dirt go away? Yeah. How come? Because. Because why? Because I didn't like the dirt. You didn't like the dirt? You had to get it off? What did you use to get it off? Water. <gasps> There were many opportunities to incorporate literacy into this investigation. We created a web, and then every child has a chance to say what they know about worms. Anthony, what do you think you know about worms? They slide on like this. It gives teachers an idea of where we have to begin. We begin by reading several nonfiction books about worms. Worms need food just like you do, but they eat dirt and rotting leaves. So the children learn that worms don't have eyes or ears, but they have a mouth. And then they learned how to tell the head from the tail and different body parts. The head is closest to where the bump is. So this is the head of the worm. This is the tail of the worm.
bringing out real worms is like what you want to do as a preschool teacher. You want them to touch and feel and get that experience. The next time they see a worm, they're not going to be afraid. How does that feel? We were able to incorporate art into our nature investigation in a variety of ways. Which insect are you going to create? What did that? We wanted the children to create their own insects with what they know about it. I see the abdomen. Where's the thorax? She asked them, make your sketch first to make sure they had all the right body parts and then take the materials and see if you can replicate what they sketched. One, two, three, four, five. I see one, two, three, four, five, six. We asked the children what they liked about nature and then we explained to them they would be able to create their own painting. Savion created a mountain. Anthony made a cardinal and Kaya created a rainbow. I absolutely love them. When we got into the functions of the parts, what is the root for, what does it do? And so we got into, this is for bringing the water to the plant. I figured hosta leaves would be good because they're big and you can really see the veins and the leaves. Why do you think it feels bumpy? Take a close look at it. What's this? We were able to have a conversation about how the plant needs to eat the water and the, the, the water will cool off the leaves so they don't get too hot in the sun. So we did rubbings to preserve what we saw with the veins. What do you think made those lines? The um, veins. The leaves, the veins and the leaves. We also took advantage of the community we live in during the nature investigation. One class visited a garden center and they let us walk through and see all the materials that were there. And there were soil and pots and everything that the children had, didn't need. That led us back into our gardening web of what we might need, which led us to our dramatic play center or our garden store. All right, let's go over and see what we have so far. And I want you to think of something if we're missing anything. So in our garden store, you said we need flowers, trees, seeds. In our classroom, the children are really heavily involved in the Dramatic Play Center. They come up with the idea. They come up with the materials that we use in there. For about two weeks, the children make the item. And then the grand opening of the garden center, which I think is the most integral part of the Dramatic Play. I want you to pay close attention to what her job is and what my job is, okay? And watch what we do. I'm the clerk of the garden store, so the first thing I'm going to do is make sure that my sign says open. I think it's so important that teachers model how to use the center because although they were part of making the items, they still don't know how to really use them. Here, why don't you take this basket with you so as you find the things you need, you can place them right in there. Okay. And what was on your list? I wrote the things that I wanted and I brought it to the clerk and, and that way children can know that the paper and the pens are used for that purpose. This one says tomato and it's for ten dollars. What I think children got most out of this nature investigation is an appreciation of nature and the environment around them. I think what I learned is it's okay if someone asks me a question I don't know the answer because with nature there's so many things to be knowledgeable about. It's okay as a teacher to say, you know, I don't know what the answer is to that but we can find out. I learned never to underestimate the toddlers. If you execute it the right way, they're really capable of learning anything. I have learned that you don't need expensive, fancy teacher gadgets in order to have a creative classroom. Children, families, teachers are finding things that are related to nature. These items are raising children's curiosity. James, when they're red, they'll be ready to pick. nature! What'd you find? Ladybug. I love hearing children say outside when you're walking or running, be careful, don't step on it, it's nature. Whereas before they'd see an ant and they'd want, they'd squish it, squish it. <laughs> they don't do that anymore.